Hey there, welcome to the Game Artist Podcast. My name is Ryan Kingsline. I am the founder of the Game Art Institute, where we train artists for the career of their lives. In this podcast, we interview amazing game artists to see what makes them tick and see how they got where they are today. So sit back, relax. I look forward to sharing their journey with you. All right, well, Arun, man, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And um, uh, guys, welcome to uh, Arun Nagar. How do I say your last name? Nagar. Nagar. Um, mm. Tell us, what do you do right now? Let's get some introduction to you, to who you are, what you've worked on. Um, we're looking at your beautiful work if you're seeing the video of this. But what do you do? Uh, uh, I'm a 3D artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Jaipur, Rajasthan, uh, India. Uh, I I have around uh, eight, 10 to 11 years of experience in gaming yeah. industry and uh, I think I have worked in 20 uh, titles but uh, the most notable I think are Call of Duty, yeah. uh, Prey, uh, Rise of Tomb Raider I think and uh, recently work on Metro 2 but uh, it was like I think DLC so I'm okay. not sure. Uh, and so what does a 3D artist mean? Uh, I mean, I guess we might take a second, excuse me, talk about the, the market in India, because it's a little different than say in the US where there's a lot of very focused specialties. But you know, tell me about just what does it mean 3D artists? Like what's the jobs you're doing? Uh, it's like uh, uh, we don't have much, much of developers here. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly are outsourced companies. Mm -hmm. So most of my, uh, if I uh, talk about my experience, job experience as a full-time artist. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I think 18 months, something. Okay. But uh, I have been freelancing for like 10 years. Right. So I don't want to, wanted to work more, uh, longer in outsource companies. So okay. Think... So I'm, I'm a little confused. So you mean you, you've been in outsource companies for about 18 months or you were in outsourced companies before that? No, no, uh, it start of when I started as an yeah. artist. Yeah. So the, my initial job was in outsourced companies only. Right. But uh, I think in 2012, I left the full-time job and yeah. uh, started freelancing. So I think there was a company in Denmark, which is, which was called uh, Interceptor Entertainment at the time. Yeah. So I was uh, modeling their characters for their yeah. game, uh, Rise of Tomb Raider, I think. Okay. No, 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 Rise of Tomb Raider. It was not Rise of Tomb Raider. It was Rise of the Tribe. Okay. I think it was a remake of uh, 93 game something. I don't Great. remember the name. Okay. Uh, and so that started when? Hmm. By 2000. 2012, I have been full-time freelancing. Okay. But uh, when I started job, I was already doing free, uh, freelancing. Sure. So, yeah. So um, tell me what that means. So as you're freelancing... How do you get clients? Yep. Mostly when, uh, uh, basically when I started uh, as a student, yes. there was a guy called Samar Vijay. Uh, he was well known, I think back in 2009, 10, 11, 12. He's not posting any work. So he was a freelance artist. So I always wanted to be a freelancer because of, uh, I, I, uh, my brother know him personally but I'm not. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, I will do freelance, freelance, freelance. Got it. But how do you get the work? So it started with one client, one, one person that you're working with. How do you get work today? Uh, mostly it is like, uh, uh, my approach was simple. First, I, I, I focus on marketing my work mostly. Okay. Right now, uh, I don't do it a lot. Like in 2014 to 15, I have, I'm not that active online, but uh, before that I was publishing my work too much. So I always get my client by their side. Uh, I am not, I'm not approaching right now clients. Yeah. But uh, this is kind of like, uh, we can say, uh, uh, be good enough that client approach you, yeah. uh, you and you don't have to approach them. Right. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's the ideal situation. That's a good position to be in. Um, and yes. so 
but there's a, there's a big world there, and I guess that's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and I wanted to unpack here because I you know I got a lot of students and and um, freelance is is one of the ways in. It's 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 interesting because it's one of the ways that people kind of start, and it's also one of the ways that people kind of finish. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to unpack there. First, you know, what does it mean? How do you market your work and, and how would you market your work today? And then the other part of that is, is what does it mean to be good enough? So from your experience, what is it that people are specifically looking for that makes you good enough? So why don't we start with that last point, which is, you know, what does it take for you to be good enough? What does somebody have to present and make sure that they're showcasing in their portfolio? I think it should be complete pipeline. You should have, you should know yeah. about sure. the pipeline completely. And Otherwise, that means all the software, right? Like Marvelous Designer, yeah. Substance, Marmoset, Unreal. Hmm. Pipeline is important. You okay. just, uh, like a uh, lot of people don't uh, just do uh, ZBrush only, but uh, they are, they mostly don't know about the full pipeline. Right. But I have been publishing my work like, uh, uh, high poly, low poly UVs, bake. Sometimes I also put bakes and then texture. Yeah. Uh, I used to share a lot of information about my workflow. So it was easy for me to get clients at that stage. And uh, also when I started, I participated in a lot of competitions. So I think at that time, I think in, back in 2010, 11, a lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. Before I even get the job in the industry, so publicity is good uh, if you want to be a freelancer. Yeah. So let's talk about publicity. But before we do that, um, you said the key things are pipeline. Make sure yes, that you yes. show um, your process. So that means like show bakes and things like that can become really important, right? Yeah. Um, and then the key operative thing, which I've heard over and over and over again, is to not to not show just digital sculpts, but to show the whole complete thing. pipeline. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because most people get enamored with ZBrush and and that's, you know, that mm -hmm. I'm one of them. You know, I love ZBrush, you know, <laughs> above all else. Um, but at the end of the day, it, you know, that doesn't get you a job. Uh, uh, as a freelancer, I think they get job uh, the guys uh, would only do ZBrush also get the job in uh, but uh, I think it's better if you know the whole pipeline. So does that yeah. include X Gen or how does how does hair and things like that work into your role as a character artist? I have tried X Gen only once. So mm -hmm. so fiber <laughs> mesh is enough for you. I'm not you. Uh, I'm not doing characters actually. Mm -hmm. Right now, three four years, I'm mostly doing props, and sometimes I do character. Actually, I'm not a character artist only. Okay, so great. I like some, sometimes I like to do props, sometimes I like to do weapons, and uh, I kind of accept every kind of work. Even I work on a stylized, it's better, I think, if you know everything in freelance. Also, there right. are a lot of people who like to prefer niche, doing like only to... one thing. And that, do... uh, I think, yeah, I think that's also a good approach, but I like to do everything. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so but I'm looking at your portfolio and I see all character work. Yeah, most of my personal work are character work, but professionally I also do those work. Like and, uh, if you see in my portfolio, uh, there are some. I think this this is a personal work, which I it was a fan art of Fallout 76, and it's a prop. I like this kind of stuff as well. And mostly I do this kind of work. So. Mo mostly the, the prop work, right? Yeah, I think 70% okay. prop work. And does that, uh, do you find that the character work, you know, cause I'm trying to unpack what you do and how it, the whole picture of you as a freelancer. And so this is a really interesting angle where it's, you, you focus on character and I mean, I'm looking uh -huh. at your anatomy. Your anatomy is great, um, mm -hmm. but the day job is in props, which makes sense to me. But can you kind of explain how that works in terms of the freelance? Like, why are people coming to you for props if you've got a bunch of character stuff? No, it's. Uh, I think the random clients who I get, yeah, mostly contact me for characters. 
but the okay. regular clients um, whom i'm working for like uh, four year five years yeah they give me props kind of thing so i'm continuing with the regular client because they make the life easy <laughs> right the random clients the random clients uh, i think i have to work sometimes late nights and have, have other things yeah but, uh, i like regular clients if money is little less that's fine yeah, but there's life more stability easy. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've got what, how many regular clients, four or five? I think two, three regular clients two. and two, three only, okay, but great. they, I'm working, uh, just like a comp there is a company like art bully. I yep. have been working with them like five years. There we go. Yeah. So that, uh, this is my regular client one off. Okay. And there are other, other clients, uh, I think it's from Japan. I yeah. did work like 14 character for this client last yeah. year. Okay. So this is awesome. All right. So Art Bully is one of the principal clients that you have. Yeah. You've had for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you get connected with them? Like what was the impetus that connected you with them? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was like 2013, 14. Mm, that is a long uh, time. I think I was recommended or something. I don't know. But it was, it has been like six years or something. So what is the job that you're producing for them now? Um, they, they email you and they say, Hey, Arun, we have, um, we have this project. Uh, how does that work? And what I'm really looking to do is just sketch out with the freelancer life. Like you wake up in the morning, you get an email from mm -hmm. these guys. Are you working every week? Um, things like that. So mostly I get a concept art. Yeah. Uh, if I'm doing like, uh, Art Bully recently released uh, this character. Yep. I think they they did raise two characters. Yep. Uh, we did uh, them like last year. So this is the character I did for them. Mm -hmm. I think they have, they uh, they just posted it one hour ago. Something. Oh sweet, great timing, so, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so this awesome. is the character I did for them. Yeah. And I think. They told me about this, uh, I think two months ago, we mm -hmm. will be publishing this, but uh, I don't have the best image. So I was waiting for them. So this is the character I did for this game. Okay. So, this game. so uh, can we look at that? Oh, sure. So what, um, with this character, you're given a character and you don't see yourself as a character artist. You see yourself as a 3d artist, right? So I want to yes, be clear yes. there. Uh, but mm -hmm. you'll do character, you'll do prop. Do you do environment or no? No, no environment. Okay, yeah, it's a beast. Character, and... props, weapon, uh, vehicle sometimes. Vehicles, okay, cool. Uh, now, when they give, so uh, our bully sends you an email, they send you concept. Uh, what mm -hmm. happens then? What, what's the process? For deliver, um, for, for you creating, are you creating for a week? Do you have some back and forth? You know, and then what's your deliverables? Uh, firstly, I start with the base mesh. So yeah. when after that we send the screenshots and files to the client. Yeah. And then uh, uh, he give uh, the client give give us feedbacks about if there is any. Uh -huh. Then we go for the high poly. And uh, like in this, I have used Marvelous Designer too. Okay. And yeah. uh, then we after Marvelous Designer we finalize the folds and everything. In GBrush, mm -hmm. then we go for a low poly UVs back face. Uh, we have to approve every stage before moving to the next stage, I think. And then we finalize texture in substance. So main pipeline is uh, like uh, we start with Maya. Okay. And sometimes we go to Marvelous Designer. Then we go to GBrush for final details. Then yeah. again, come back to Maya, Maya or Max, whichever the requirement for the project. Mm -hmm. Then bake in substance and again text finalize the texture in substance and export. That's it. Okay. High resolution. Then you do your low resolution. That's what you're going back into Maya or Max for, right? To do the UVs yes. and all that. And yes. then uh, the texture. So you're you're responsible for three phases of this. Yep. Um, yes. So to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're in the substance phase, this is something uh -huh. that my students and I experience a lot. Uh, there's a gap between what it looks like in substance and what it looks like 
in Unreal or Marmoset or or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you guys handle how do you handle that pipeline and is there back and forth at that stage? Uh, I think for the client, uh, whatever work I have done for the clients, I think mm -hmm. most most of them was they were happy in the substance. Okay. So I never checked in Unreal. But for the personal work, what I do is uh, I like I don't uh, do personal work in Unreal. I like to prefer Marmoset. Yeah. So uh, especially when we get problem in roughness, I think. So right, I like yeah. to export uh, every 10 to 15 minutes the maps to the uh, Marmoset and check yeah. the visual like this character I, am, I will show. It looks different in uh, uh, substance, but uh, this looking like this in looking better in Marmoset. So I was yeah. I was doing there something else, but it looking like this. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I, I think uh, I was inspired for Kratos. Mm. And I have other. Other uh, work in progress shots too. Let me share That's almost a um, a sadhu version. Yeah. Uh, these are my um, work in progress shots for this character. Like uh, this is my general pipeline. Like this is the day one, day one, and this is block out stage. Yeah. Then day two, improved little bit. Then day three, just working on the head. Yeah. Day four, uh, one more step in the head. Day five, a uh, little bit improvement for the beard. Uh -huh. Day six, uh, this is day seven. This is day eight. And I was detailing the beard in this stage, day nine. This is day 10. And day 11, this one. So this head was done in 11 days for me. Especially I took a lot of time for this beard. I was just experimenting a lot for this look and feel. Mm -hmm. And then I started with this uh, bake, bake and best structure. I think it was like day 12 for me. Yeah. I was free at that time. <laughs> no project at that time. Yeah. And this is kind, this is day 13. A uh, little bit uh, improvement in best texture and feel. These these are Marmoset screenshots. Day 14, day 15. Uh, this is the time when I decided that I will go for the Indian version for this character, mm -hmm. not the white skin guy. And day 17. And then I took some reference for this uh, paint mask. It was like day 18. Then I started. I was uh, I used accent for this character for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. So I think it was not the best, but if I do, uh, if I use accent again, I think I can do better. Uh, I was using these maps, these cards. Like this is unique. This is unique. And then I use two, three kind of this, this or this, this and this are same. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I was using that I was changing the base color of this. So and uh, day 20. So wait a minute. Um, okay, this is day 21. Like uh, the original texture for this uh, hairs hairs was like this, but mm -hmm. I have added some yellow because I think. This pen mask will chip off a kind of effect will go there. So this yellow beard effect kind of. Then it was like day 23 for me and this 24 day. So the head I gave around 24 days for this character. Oh, man. And, and this is Kratos version. But I think beard was a little big for. Yeah. I love so that idea kind of Sadhu. <laughs> So this is the my this is my pipeline for character like this, and uh, there are a lot of 
close up the screenshot. Dude, that's intense. Tell me, okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. Do you mind if we dive into this a bit? Yeah. All right. So um, I want to get into the skin and the specularity, but I think I want to look at that beard. I mean, uh, that's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. So what was your Thanks. process for creating this? So uh, I can explain, I think, from here. Okay. So uh, I, have used, I was using this kind of chunk. So, seg so first you're segmenting it with like, um, with like an insert tube or clay tube brush or something like that, right? Yes, yes, yes. So okay. these are my base. Yeah. And uh, then I was doing a little bit uh, sculpting. Mm -hmm. and when you, when you, with... Sorry to interrupt. When you sculpt, um, what are the brushes you're using? You're using, uh, it looks like you're using snake hook for the edges. Am I wrong? Yeah, I was using a snake hook for this one. And are you using been, Dynamesh mode? Yep. Okay. Uh, I, um, my main brushes are like a standard brush, clay tube brush, uh, more tool, dam standard, and uh, flat, uh, inflate brush. Inflate, yeah. Brush. All right. That's it. And, sorry, I mean, I meant by Dynamesh mode, I mean, are you using Sculptress Pro or? I'm using Dynamesh. Okay, so you just move it, Dynamesh it, move it, Dynamesh it. Yep, yep. And then sculpt it, okay? Yes. So then going for this little detail and still experimenting with what is looking good for this character. Mm -hmm. Then one, uh, this is another stage where I was detailing the beard a little more. So mm -hmm. I wanted to get, get some heavy look or something. Dense look, I, I will say. Mm -hmm. And then I started one by one. So I think the beard, this detail, in the beard took I think three days to me. I started, but I <laughs> regretted it on this. <laughs> Why did I start it? But uh, yeah, there are a lot of details. How did you do it though? Was it, cause what I'm seeing here, um, I mean, I think you're using a cavity inside the render, correct? Yes, yes, yes. So to that's get, highlighting. Uh, more detail. Yes, yes, yes. But how'd you sculpt it? Were you using? Uh, I think I was using. I uh, I think I was using only dam standard. Okay. And then snake hook brush for the ends only. Okay. All so right. And the, with the with Damien standard brush, you'd probably I'd assume you you both push in and you're pulling out, right? Yes. 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 Okay, and that's so that's how you're getting the ridge is by pressing alt and pulling those nice lines out. Mm -hmm. okay. And then later, later stage, I was, uh, I did some, I added some uh, uh, single strands like, uh, let me show these strands, like single hairs to yeah. get the variation and better look, I think, I must okay. say. Uh, yeah, yeah, the strands definitely help, huh? Um, I saw Mike DeFeo do that actually in uh, when he was designing the characters for Secret Life of Pets. That was a strategy he did. He put a little, a little separate strand of mm -hmm. polygons in there, and it just helped sell it. Yes. Um, and when you look at this from a distance, you know, it really rocks because it's like you see all of this detail and you're like, holy crap, did he X-Gen that? Like, how do you do that? And that's all just a sculpt. Yes, yes. All right. This is great. Okay. So uh, I have a sense of that. We had a sense of the X-Gen, but we won't need to die. Oh, can we look at your eyebrows real quick? Um, always something I think people, I think you did a great job. Look at the way those are weaving. Um, that's a, gr this is a fantastic job. I think I did a uh, basic sculpt in this, like in this area, there is a basic sculpt for the eyebrows and then single hairs, just placing them randomly to get this look. This is not fiber mesh. No, this is not fiber mesh. I have used fiber mesh too in some other project, uh, like uh, which one? I think this one, but I think it was like three years ago. So I don't remember the pipeline exactly. And uh, I have shared a couple of tutorials too for this mm -hmm. Dr. Strand fan art. And I have shared some pipeline about the fiber image too in this. 
and uh, this one looks like this yeah got it what made you do polygons over fiber mesh uh, I, I didn't get it well in would why'd you switch like in the uh, Sadhu Kratos you used mm -hmm. polygons as opposed to fiber mesh I think I like different different pipeline and different project yeah uh, just experimenting I'd, I'd, yeah, experiment. In personal work, we can do it. And I think we should do it. If we, along those lines, if we go back to your rage character, what kind of timeline are you given on projects like this? Uh, I think it, uh, I think six week, something. Okay. And that's assuming uh, some back weeks. and forth. Uh -huh. Yes. Six weeks for the whole character, high poly, uh, low poly, UVs, back, texture, everything within six weeks. Okay. Uh, there was no head. Uh, I, I think I sculpted heads, uh, head too, but uh, I think they have changed it. Okay. <laughs> did you do the body I, too, the hands and the legs and all that? Yes, yes. I did hands and body. Okay. All right. All right, then, um, so let's take a look at the specularity then. That's the next thing I think that's important um, for, for people that are figuring this out. So if we look at your Marmoset file, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, or, in terms of creating, you know, really good skin, and, and I don't mean, I mean, I mean realistic, but I'm not, realism's not like the end-all be-all for me. I just mean like what is something that presents itself well to a client or a potential client that, that makes them say, oh, I... I could use this person for project X or project Y. Um, so all I'm trying, all I'm really angling for is, you know, is um, what helps somebody in what in the way we talk talk about it in the boot camps. What helps somebody become a job candidate? Like at what point does their work transition from when you know they're a student to oh yeah I could hire them for X. So in terms of the skin, um, mm -hmm. what do you think is the most important thing for somebody to really lock down? I think best textures and uh, uh, actually <laughs> it's hard to explain. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think overall look should be uh, as far as I say, my style is more kind of a realistic. So yep. I always try to match with the real references. Sometimes I push things here and there, but uh, I like to match with other references. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the pipeline is most important part again. Okay. For me, one of the things that is really problematic with skin is the specularity, the roughness. Yep, it is. Uh, and that's the thing that sells it. Cause I, I, I was, hold on one sec. I was, um, ex I was showing some students one of my one of my projects and one of the things that struck me as i was explaining it was that the specularity and i'm just going to use the old word for it uh it's mm -hmm. what really makes skin skin like it that's what highlights and really shows skin off uh so what do you do uh in your characters to 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 get that roughness working the specularity i think i i do a lot of uh, manual work first uh, uh, these days we use a map curvature right uh, I think it, it gives a uh, good base then okay. I do a lot of lot of uh, manual work like okay. uh, if uh, we see in close-ups there are like this uh, sweats and then I have given little extra speculity around the eyes I think it gives good Indian look. Mm -hmm. So, can I see your? I map? mostly pull. Yep. Uh, from where we can, see. can we see your material really? Yeah. Uh, scatter translucency so glossiness. So you set your gloss to one and just control it with the values inside the map. Yes. Yes. And then, uh, oh, you're not using specular. You're using um, metalness. Uh, roughness. 
Uh, no, I mean so, in your reflectivity, the advanced metalness. But, so this uh, is the kind of map I'm using. Only rough, I'm using an only roughness in this map. Okay, got it. These are like uh, stripes, and uh, this is the mask paint paint mask. Mm -hmm. I think there is not there is not a lot of work in this task. Do you put pores in in the roughness or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I get pore details from I think curvature map. Okay. And then do you sculpt the pores manually or do you use texturing.xyz or something like that? I know the pipeline for the X, X, y, uh, X, Y, Z, but I haven't used it yet because oh, you, uh, you do it by hand. Awesome. Yeah. I'm old school kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's good though. I mean, it's, it's for me, I like texturing.xyz because it educates you as to what pores look like, you know, and if you just go in, if my students just go in and they just start sculpting pores manually, it's like, it's a big learning curve. Um, yep. And I remember talking to um, Brian Wade and some VFX guys way back in the day. And those mm -hmm. guys, like, I mean, they practiced, they studied, they spent years. You know, it's a craft to do it by hand. So it's important to learn it, you know, and get a sense of it first. Um, so when you come into the eyes, this is all hand sculpted wrinkles. Yes. Yes, yes. All That's hand cool. sculpted. Yeah. I like manual. I like to do manual work a lot. Yeah. And not tech. I'm not that. Uh, good technically. <laughs> really? It doesn't show. <laughs> so I think for the eyes, I, I haven't seen, actually my every project looks different from other project. <laughs> sure. Uh, like um, but the... if you could unpack those, that eye for me, I think it'd be really cool because I know I have some students that would love to get in and do that. And both yeah. of those eyebrows are sculpted manually. No, I am using here, I think, alpha cards for the eyebrows. Okay. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot I was in um, Marmoset there yeah, for a well, sec. So here are some details, and I think the tear mesh. This there you like, go. This is tear mesh. Yeah. Also transition mesh. mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, can I mesh. see? Yeah. Can I? Can you click the eyeshadow mask? Let me just see the geometry on that. Uh, let me see where I get it. Sphere render. Wireframe. There we go. Okay. So and your tear, the tear mesh. Okay, the tear mesh is basically a tube, correct? Yep. This and, tube and this is small yep. tube. Okay, great. And do you just lay that down inside of ZBrush? No, I use mess mostly Maya for this kind of eye setup. Okay, fine. Uh, and then the eye shield. Do you call it eye shield? I think you call uh, eye shadow mesh. Eye shadow mesh. Yeah. It gives little bit effect, little effect of I think, give okay. better results. And that's just it covers basically half of the eye. Hmm. And then there is eye mesh. Uh, I think I have this somewhere else. I think this is not the file. File or something. Eye. Oh. I have two different eyes. <laughs> Got it. Both are looking different. Uh, this one is this, and this is I am calling dead eye. Yeah. I think I'm using different texture for this and mesh. Then I have this earring mesh. Why right, it is there? Then this is cornea mesh. Yeah. Do you use a refraction for the eyes to get that? Uh, I'm not using that actually. What do you, if on your cornea, um, what kind of transparency are you using? Let me see. Uh, cornea. Uh, where is cornea mesh? Oh, 
Okay, this is the material for the cornea. And uh, okay, and so your transparency you said to add. Yep. Add full, and uh, there is I think this value for the glossiness. And I'm go. using metal less for one. Okay. Treating cornea is the metal, and uh, that's it. I, okay. There is no fixed value for me. I like to experiment for these values. I think whatever looks good. I think I, it doesn't matter for me. I think yeah, yeah. And I get it. it should look one. I, I tell the my students all the time that because we're all, when we're learning, we're always looking for the recipe. And then I interview artists, and I you know I'd work myself, and that's like there's no recipe. Um, <laughs> you just got to be the cleverest monkey at the end of the day, right? You just going out there trying things out and seeing what goes on, um, and that's what helps educate you so that you can actually yeah. be more valuable to your team too. I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, all right, so um, if you don't mind, I would love for you to kind of, if if you um, if you have the the brain, uh, if you have the space for it, to um, talk to me about the the transition of hair to the low poly, so the cards. So in the eyelashes, you use cards. Yes. And um, in the eyebrows, yeah. you're using cards. Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, I, if I saw correctly, you actually do the eyelashes inside of ZBrush, probably fiber mesh or individual geometry, right? No, no, no. I'm again using Maya for this. x uh, I, no, no. These are manually. I have put these cards manually. Yes. These, these cards and uh, same for this beard. Got it. So How do you create the this, cards? Do you mind explaining or, or walking us through that just a tiny bit? Actually, I haven't done a lot of work for the hairs, mostly yeah. in freelancing. Yeah. The This kind of work, uh, clients handle themselves or they sure. have specialists for the hairs. Yeah. So I don't get a lot of work I or I say hardly get any work for the hairs. Yeah. Mostly most... clients handle themselves. So this is kind of uh, experiment maybe not the best techniques so this is all manual work <laughs> yeah okay fair like, enough like uh, if uh, i share the screenshots again like uh, i started with the black uh, base for the this is the best black mesh yeah. base then i layer this these cards then i went for another layer of cards keep taking uh, if they look good in every angle, mm. then another layer of cards. I have, and then another layer of cards. Four layers. Then this is another layer of cards. So there, Got it. there's, I think I have spent, I think three days for arranging these cards only. Okay. Mostly what I was meaning was the eyelashes and the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, if we're talking about your eyelashes, you've got eyelash card. Do you have, um, for the lower eyelash, do you have just one card that you use? Do you have multiple cards? I think I have two, three variation for the eyelashes. Okay. For, uh, I think if we come closer. Yeah. I think there, there will be this card, yes. this card, and this card. Then I just repeat them. Okay. Scale up, scale down every single mesh to get yeah. the final result or something I want. Okay. And that mesh you're using transparency set to add, I think, or you set it to dither. Uh, I have to see this. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm asking so many technical uh, and I really appreciate the patience. Uh, beard card. These are beard cards. I think we can see here as well. So this is the normal map, gloss map, albedo and uh, occlusion and cavity yeah. alpha sending it to dither of, of course um so there i think that explains it actually too so um with the eyelashes are the eyelashes on this like you have one atlas that has all your hair on it are the eyelashes on that atlas too uh i i, I didn't get what is atlas <laughs> this um this uh one image that's got all of these examples I think these are the eyelashes meshes yeah. okay that answers the question this it's texture all, it's all one texture yeah. and then I'm you just using, move think, the UVs yeah yeah 
That's great. How do you create this, that image? Do you paint that image in Photoshop or? For this, I think I, uh, I don't remember actually. I think I was using Xen for this or maybe I need to see it in my folder. Actually, I do a lot of work, clients mm -hmm. work, so I, I just forget about the yeah. personal work sometimes. No, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you allowing me to deep dive into this, because this is the kind of technical things that it's like you and I were able to kind of just get in and do and work, and we're just interested in the result, but it's, but it stops people in the yeah. early stages, and, and they, they can spend days just thinking through something. Yes, uh, I think I will not... Uh, Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't mm -hmm. find the folder for this. All good. All good. Um, can we look, uh, can you turn the wireframe off and let's just look real close at it and that should be enough for us to... Mm, wait a minute. I think this is painted. Hand painted. Okay. I have used Exens too, but I think in this I did hand painted work. Okay, that's cool though, because I mean that that's like, you know, it's easy to get to think of how technical you can get, but I mean, if I was looking at those eyelashes, I was starting to think, you know, it's like these is, is you can see all the detail and whatnot, but it does look painted. Um, and I'm looking at your albedo map, you know, and so these are just, you know, uh, although I mean, you look at your occlusion map and your occlusion map and the cavity that looks actually pretty, that looks pretty X Gen. Mm -hmm. um, that's really neat uh, to go in there. Yeah, can I see your alpha map? Can you just um, highlight the alpha map? This is the alpha map. Oh, sorry, I mean the one you're using for transparency. Is it you're using, yeah, you're using the diffuse and you're using the alpha, okay, I get it. Uh, and then your occlusion map. Yep, I think... That'll be the last I bug you for maps. <laughs> <laughs> You have to turn the red, green, blue on. Yeah, this, yeah, is, this looks painted uh, too. Yeah, it is painted. So, I don't remember actually. So awesome. That's pretty cool. Arun, man, thank you so much for allowing me to um, deep dive into that. Uh, you know, I think it's it's really quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's head over to your art station since we're looking at your screen. And I want to make sure everybody knows uh, where to find you. And then I've got a couple more questions, and then uh, I want to open this up for people as well. Um, okay. In fact, uh, we can start with Gus, since it's a technical question he's asking while we're still on that framework. Um, Gus is asking, uh, are all those maps 4K in resolution? And that kind of uh, asks the question of when you're doing your pr personal work, because your personal work is what I'm interested in, not the production, because in production they'll have mm -hmm. requirements and they'll inform everybody. When you're doing your personal work, the, per the work that is Im important for kind of getting you jobs, um, what kind of resolution do you work with? Do you work with 4K, 2K, 8K? Uh, I think it depends on project to project. Like uh, yep. if uh, I share this, uh, in this uh, prop, I was using 2K map okay because this is a small prop I think my idea is to do some work which uh, clients find similarities to yeah. use me in, in their project or something so this asset is using 2K map around uh, like I have written it and add thousand triangles which I think is normal for triple A titles and then if uh, I share this prop and uh, I have used it around two 2K size map and two 1K size map for this whole book. And for the substance file, I'm using double resolution because uh, when we get client uh, in freelance as well, they always prefer to get uh, double resolution in working mm -hmm. files. But for final, like if uh, they want 2K map in the game, they prefer in the substance final substance file to get double resolution like okay. if uh, 2k to 4k just double okay. resolution yeah awesome 
All right, guys, um, questions. Start asking your questions, getting your questions out there. This would be a great time. Um, there's a couple of things I've learned from this that I think are really important. Uh, really kind of diving in and looking at uh, the roughness channel, I think was really cool. Looking at the hair and uh, Arun deep diving into that was really nice. Um, to allow us to kind of see that. Uh, so uh, Arun, if somebody is, let's say, let's say somebody's in India today and just mm -hmm. getting started. Um, mm -hmm. You're in you're in Jaipur, which is in the west, I think, right? Rajasthan. Yes. Yes, yeah, that's yes. the desert part. Mm -hmm. um, my my wife and I, we have a house in Delhi, which is yeah. still under construction, <laughs> eight years later, uh, mm -hmm. and um, so we went to Rajasthan. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. And uh, it's got to be crazy hot there now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's around, I think, 45 degrees centigrade. 45, Wait, 46. Dude, I don't hear 40. I don't hear centigrade above 30. Um, 45 <laughs> centigrade is got to be. How much is that? I'm looking right now. 113 it's degrees. It's a lot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and uh, AC is not a big thing in India yet, so. No, no, it's not. So are you on the roof? Because that's where we were last time it was hot. We yep. Just hang hang out on the roof at night. Yep. Um, all right, so let's say somebody's in India, and um, mm -hmm. and they're getting started now, and mm -hmm. it's a global marketplace. So yes. you have clients. You work for yourself essentially, but you have clients. Um, mm -hmm. so let's just talk for a second to that guy who's in India, that girl who's in India and, and they're going to get started. Um, and they have, they also have the option of working at an outsourced company, which, you know, I know from some of my students that have done that is it's pretty brutal, uh, mm -hmm. work. Let's say we want to prepare them to go the path you're doing, which is to be their own person, start their own business, do their own freelance, get clients. Um, what would you do? differently today to help you get there faster i think it's uh, first we uh, we have to do good job good work yeah as an artist and then we have to smartly publish work mm -hmm. like uh, facebook mark there there are a lot of options like facebook marketing and i think i had facebook page too a lot of years ago, I think back in mm -hmm. 2012. I'm not using that no more. Uh, I think as soon, uh, the time art station came, I think all those Facebook pages and are not that great. Mm -hmm. So I think to start as a freelancer, I must say, uh, do a lot of work, uh, stay in pub, uh, people's eye, people eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, good job. Uh, do good job. Uh, what else I should share? I think it's good enough. We if, have to consist. It's it should be consistently. Yes. And good. That makes a lot of sense. Consistently being out there. Publish work. Yes. Yes. Is it important for people to hit Facebook Art Station? Is there any particular forums that people should be hitting that you that you think are useful? I think art station is number one at this time, and uh, Facebook is also great, and uh, and uh, I think Instagram too. But I think it's hard to get a lot of followers there. Facebook yeah. is better, especially I think there is a group called Ten Thousand Hours Pixelosi. I have I have got a lot of work from these groups too, like Facebook. Uh, also. Uh, I think these days uh, forums like Polycount is not that uh, good for uh, these are great, but people are not using them as much they used to use uh, like back in five years ago, six years ago. Right. That's awesome. Uh, Corinne is asking about pores. Is there some recommendation you have for people who are going to study um, manually sculpting pores and skin detail? I think I have seen some tutorials from you <laughs> back in 2009. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I learned gibberish from you. I think you ah. was posting. Yeah. Uh, back in 2008, I was in an institute. 
mm-hmm. which i think you call a school yeah so there was no gbrush in our institute no one using gbrush so i was looking at what i can do better uh, i think there were i i stayed there only 3 months so my school time is like 3 months only mm-hmm. then i uh self study for like 2 years to get my first job so at that time i was learning gbrush from you that's awesome <laughs> from your that's... tutorials like uh, i think you were posting in pixelozy or something yeah and that's about the time i think i was still working there or i was working at nomen at in 2008 i can't remember right now this company i got now is about 10 years old so yep but uh, right. uh, but yeah. there was only guy at that time who was sharing tutorials for gibrush i think it was only you yeah i think you're right i remember right. anyone else. and I remember, there was yeah i think there was uh, there was other one or two guys too but uh, they don't uh, they didn't continue right you are still here <laughs> yeah me and mike although i'm not teaching zbrush these days but mr pavlovich is out there doing a fantastic job him and pablo pablo are do, is doing an amazing job um, as well yeah. all right arun man thank you so much for sharing your project your wisdom and all that stuff i really appreciate you taking the time i know it's super late there that's okay all right guys thanks for joining me and uh, you know where to find arun and can we go back to your art station main page yep main page main page okay arun It just it's all right there you see it on screen a r u n dash n a g a r head over there give him a follow um and then you can fo- uh, check out he's got some tutorials and stuff posted in there as well again arun men take care thanks thank you thank you thank you for having me yeah all right see you guys All right. So I want to thank you so much for being here for taking the time and for listening to this podcast and I want to ask a couple of things from you. Number 1, make sure you leave a comment or you rate this on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever it is that you're getting this. That's going to make a big difference in helping us get the word out and get people to know who we are. All right, the other thing is I want to make sure you know where to find us. So you can head over to www.gameartinstitute.com where you can learn about our flagship program, which is the Game Artist Boot Camp. This this is designed for those who are really looking to move the needle on their career and really lock in that job. You may have gone to school and learned a bunch, maybe haven't learned a bunch. But at the Game Art Institute, the primary focus we have is the very specific industry skills, the triggers that you really need to hit in that job interview. What are the specific things that they're looking for? That's what we're going to be training you on. We're going to taking applications right now for environment artists and for character artists. So make sure you head over to www.gameartinstitute.com and apply today. that way we can have that conversation make sure this is a fit for you make sure that you're a fit for it and if everything is perfect then we will sign you up for that right away and get you into your training and start moving the needle on your career all right thank you so much again for being here take care have an amazing day